Hello everyone and welcome to Epifan Live. Uh, we've got a great topic today. We're going to be talking about how to add captions to your live stream. Um, I'm Dave Kirk. I run the uh, marketing group here and I've got Greg. Greg, you can introduce yourself. Sure, I'm Greg Quirk. I'm uh, one of the product managers here at Epifan. Um, and, you know, one of the products I focus on is, is live script and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Yeah, so we've had a ton of interest lately in uh, in the live script product, and we thought it would be great to just bring a topic that's not just focused on live script, but tackling the general problem of how to get captions into a live stream. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, we might just wait a couple minutes here. We see some people uh, coming in on chat. I see Tim Trot and uh, Edward from Toronto, just down the road, uh, so not so far from us. Um, so we'll maybe give it a minute here, and then we'll uh, we'll get started and and kick off the topic. I lost my audio. Right. Hold on. Uh -oh. Okay. Well. Okay. Let's, well, let's um, let's um, maybe start maybe digging start in digging here. in um, here. Um, we want to start with just maybe. Maybe describing, describing the scenario, the scenario. Um, it's maybe it's obvious, but maybe we'll, we'll, set we'll just set the stage for, for captions, for captions what, what they are, why you want them in the live stream, and, and, and a couple, couple ways, ways to do that, and then, we'll, and then we'll get into some of the details of the value of having that. Um, so Greg, I don't know if you want to kind of walk us through just what we mean when we talk about captions and what why people are wanting uh, to do this in the first place, where, where the need comes from. Oh. Sorry, I think I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. My <laughs> headphones just died, uh, but they seem to have come okay. back. Weird. All right. Well, I was just saying we'll 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 just give a quick intro maybe to to captioning in general. Um, talk about what we mean when we talk about transcription or captioning, and what people are looking to do with it in their live stream and how they want that to behave. Sure. So, you know, the idea of captioning is the ability to get text to show up on the screen so that you can read what's being said. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people want to do something like this. So whether, you know, there's hearing challenges, maybe they speak a different native language, um, you can read a little bit easier than you can hear uh, what's being said. Um, you know, even if you're, uh, in the room and you're seeing what's going on and you're listening to everything, there could be distractions that are happening. So you'll right. miss you know, something that was said, but if there's captions, well, you can catch up on what was going on. Um, and even Perfect. from, you know, a, you know, I go onto LinkedIn and I'll be scrolling through my feed and if there's a video that, you know, videos will automatically start playing and if there's captions, I'm more likely to stop and you know, see what's going on and, and uh, you know, pay attention to what's happening um, rather than, okay, I now have to click on it, turn on the audio and find my headphones and stuff. Um, so it really does yep. help to increase, um, you know, the presence and the, the pull of the videos that are available. Perfect. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of people, whether, whether their application, is, as you mentioned, is, you know, conferences or education, just across the board, we've had a lot of inquiries lately on, on captioning and the fact that we did announce the live script, I'm sure invited a lot of those questions where people are asking, you know, now that it can be done in real time, it can be done live. How do I get that into my stream? How do I take advantage of that? And um, in some cases, there are, um, you know, even regulations people are meeting. So there's accessibility kind of concerns and people want to make sure that content is accessible either for convenience or for people who just need those captions to be able to follow the the gist of the of the content so um we've seen a lot of people doing that um and i guess there's a few ways you can kind of think about captions in audio um one of them is the cea 708 um, maybe you can just help us understand kind of what that is and whether it applies to what we're talking about today or whether that's something completely different yeah it's, it's not completely different uh cea 708 is used for broadcast captions so these are things that you'll see on your TV set, for example. Um, so there's a, a set of standards out there that you have to follow. Um, usually it requires some additional hardware equipment to get your you know, captions ingested into the video stream. Uh, but it's really for broadcast applications. Um, 
Right. And a lot of people are doing video content that aren't broadcast, right? They're streaming stuff everywhere. And so you have to look for different types of applications and different methods for getting your, your transcriptions into your video streams. Um, and that's got where it. you know you've got your encoder-based transcriptions that are coming in, um, and there's a number of different ways that you can do that. And we'll talk about uh, a few of those. But the general idea is you've got you know content somewhere, you're getting a transcription, and then you want to apply that to your video stream um, that's not broadcast-based. Got it. Makes sense. So the OTT kind of flow is is really. A different animal, uh, similar but different animal than the than the traditional broadcast necessarily. Yeah, um, and it, it is just a little bit more um, prevalent and available for everyone, right? Um, you know, if you are looking at some of the different options that are out there, you know, you've got browser-based tools, so you've got okay. you know a website where hey, I'm just going to give it a, a URL stream information, and it will provide a transcription for you. What you do with that, though, is another question, right? So I've got a website <laughs> yeah. and, you know, a section of the page provides a transcription of what's going on. Um, then I have to feed that into something else, something like OBS or, or something like that, so that I can now take that transcription and, you know, add it to my video stream so it'll show up and actually be part of my video itself. Um, so there's a lot of different pieces that you would have to look at adding in um, because you're getting audio somehow. You have to figure out how you're going to get your audio in, um, you know, whether that's through you know, a URL or if you're directly putting it into a computer. Then you're getting your transcription. Then you have to feed it usually into another software program, massage it to the way you want it to look, and then you've got your output right. out of that. Perfect. So OBS is is one example, I guess, if you're, and especially if you're using kind of, as you mentioned, browser-based tools to get those captions in the first place, then you're already on a computer. So something like OBS kind of makes sense in that environment. Um, what, are there popular tools for that, like that are, that are web-based? Are there ones that, that we've tried out or we have any experience with? Yeah, there's, you know, the, the list of, um, you know, websites where you can get transcriptions, um, they're, they're countless, right? There's tons of stuff that are out there that you can do. Um, you know, a couple that we've looked at are uh, PubNub um, and Web Captioner. Right. And so, you know, these are sites where, yeah, you can just get transcriptions just to show up. Um, but there's a, a bunch of other ones, right? Um, you know, there's Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is just a software program that takes speech to text. Um, you, know, right. you can even do it in PowerPoint or Word if you want to, where it will, you know, your computer speaker okay. will listen to you and, you know, provide transcriptions of what's being said. Got it. Um, challenge with some of these ones, though, as well is, um, you know, if it's just a, a website where you're throwing in a uh, URL stream um, and it's free, what you kind of get what you pay for in a lot of these regards, right? Um, so okay. you know, they'll provide some transcriptions, but there's no real, you know, is it going to be good and uh, work as well as you want it to? Okay, so a little bit of a caveat there. It's 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 simple, it's free, but may not always be the best choice. Um, so what what other options do you have going beyond kind of the browser based kind of free stuff? Where where do you go next if you're looking for something above that. Yeah, so still kind of keeping in that, that same frame. So I'm going to send a stream into something. Um, you know, there's a company called EEG um, where they've recently been talking about their Falcon implementation. And the way something like this works is you send an RTMP stream into their, their solution and it will feed that up into either, you know, a physical person that's doing your transcriptions for you. Um, they also have an AI based version and then it will return the transcription and apply it to your video feed and then send that out as an RTMP stream. Um, so the nice thing about this is you don't have to try to manage all of those individual pieces where you're saying, oh, I wanna you know, provide a stream into this and I'm gonna get a caption and then I have to massage it and apply it to my video. This just takes care of things like that for you, um, which is, is 
makes things a little bit easier for the people that want to apply transcriptions to their solutions. Yeah, that that's kind of nice in that it it uh, it's kind of offloaded from your local machine, and if you're in a production environment already, you could just take your production feed out, stream it presumably directly to Falcon, and then from there, those captions get inserted before you hit your distribution to your CDN or or wherever you're going. So that that's kind of a nice solution if you want it kind of out of your <laughs> production room. You do all your production and then you hand it off and get the captions added uh, kind of on the way to the CDN. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so it, it just makes everything so much more easy because um, you just don't have all those pieces you have to deal with. Um, and this, there... Is there much in the way of customization when you use something like Falcon? Is is it always embedding those captions as video as a lower third, or do you, do you have some kind of options of you know captions beside your frame or on top of your frame, or do you know how how flexible is it in terms of what you can do with the captions and what they look like to the end user? Off the top of my head, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, oh, okay. So, you know, my understanding is that it is something that's embedded in the video stream itself. Um, it's right. not, you know, I don't work for that company, right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know everything yeah. that it can and can't do. Um, it is something that they have recently been talking about. So there was a webinar, uh, you know, about a month ago, I think it was. Um, but, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head whether it's, it's directly as part of the video feed. Um, there are some solutions that are out there. This may do it or may not, but um, where the right. captioning is provided as part of a metadata file um, as part of the stream. Um, okay. So then the end user can actually choose whether or not they want to turn off or turn on the captioning. Um, so the nice thing about that is, you know, it's not there for people that don't want it, but then they can actually turn it on if, right. if they do want it. Um, whereas if it's hard coded, it's there. Um, you don't have an option. It. It's, it's part of your, your video stream at that point. Right. So in that case, they're relying on their player that they're viewing that content with to understand that, hey, captions are there. They're available. I can turn them on or turn them off if I want to. So I don't, like you said, it's not always permanently in the stream for everybody. I let the player help me decide or help me access them if I need them. Yep. That, that's a nice option too, uh -huh. um, to be able to, to, to embed it as metadata rather than kind of as pixels directly on the image. That's, that's a nice option to have. Um, um, I heard about a company, Otter AI. I've heard that one come up a few times, especially in conjunction with, um, you know, Zoom or other services. What, what kind of things do they offer? What, how do they differ from, from the ones we've talked about already? Yeah, and, uh, you know, Zoom... Um, is something everyone's using nowadays, right? Everyone's doing all their meetings online. Um, you know, they're doing webinars online. They're doing all kinds of content online. And uh, Zoom does have, um, you know, an app marketplace where you can choose what you want to download and have as part of your Zoom um, experience. Um, and okay. one of the sections that they do have is transcriptions. Um, so we can see some of the ones that you can download here. Um, so Otter is one of them, and, and we'll talk about that in a, in a second. Um, but there are other ones as well. And you know, the idea is, again, I want to get some kind of transcription based on whatever I'm doing on Zoom. Um, and they operate a little bit differently. So for a lot of these, what you have to do is the administrator for the Zoom account has to download it and enable it for the users. And then the individual okay. users, when they're doing a meeting, can then decide whether or not they want to take advantage of whichever application's been downloaded by the administrator. Um, right. In most cases, they do require you to have, you know, it's, it's not the free version of Zoom that it, um, lets you use these. So you have to have, you know, one of the more uh, premium um, accounts with Zoom. And right. then you also have to have a service with these companies, so with Rev or with Otter or whoever, um, so that you can get those transcriptions from those companies as well. Um, Perfect. Some of them are relatively easy to set up, so your admin enables it and you just turn it on. Other ones, it's a little bit more convoluted where it's applied by the administrator, 
but then you have to start copying and pasting links all over the place and jumping back between different mm -hmm. interfaces to make it work. Um, so it, it kind of depends on which one you choose to use. Uh, talking about Otter specifically, um, it's a little bit interesting because it provides the transcription as a little side application that's running. So you've got your Zoom oh, screen, okay. and then you've got a side area that opens up that provides your transcriptions. Uh, the nice thing about that is uh, if everyone is on the right account, they can go in and you can actually make modifications to it. You can add pictures into it um, as you know things are being discussed. And then at the end, well, great, I've got essentially meeting notes, including images and corrections and everything um, that are ready and available, uh, which is, is kind of neat. Uh, it's a little bit different though because it's not a traditional lower third on your video um, because it's, it's the side app that's being opened up. Uh, doesn't mean it's good or bad, it's just it's a little bit different than you know what people are used to when they have transcription as a lower third. Um, right, yeah. You know, something like the, the application from Rev, it does provide that lower third. Um, so it'll actually be a lower third that shows up on the screen. Um, Got it. So it, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Uh, again, one of the nice things about this is if it is a lower third on your screen, then once that you know section is done, it's gone. It's it's no longer being provided, so I can't read back on the things that I might have missed or you know try to understand something. Whereas with the Otter one, hey, I can just scroll up and go, oh, well, that's what was said, and then you know, scroll back down and keep going. Right. Um, That's kind of nice. Yeah, so it's, it's. Do you, do you happen to know if, if I, if I set this up either with Rev or, or with Otter inside of Zoom and had these captions running, if I then take my Zoom output and RTMP that out as part of a production, so I'm kind of using Zoom to bring in guests and have a conversation, do you know whether there's a, difference between the way otter does it and the way that rev does it whether will they both show up in that rtmp stream going out or do you know whether zoom kind of treats those captions as separate from the rtmp do you know what i, I mean i do know what you mean it would kind of de depend on how you are setting that zoom stream out right so if you are okay. you know doing it the way that we used to do it um, when we started doing our, our online videos and, and webinars and, and whatnot. Uh, we were taking the Zoom feed into our switcher and then we were using that switcher right. as our output. In that case, it would work because we're capturing everything that Zoom is providing. Um, yeah. If you're doing it a different way where I'm saying, hey, here's you know an RTMP stream of the Zoom event, um, I don't know whether or not it would show up or not. Um, and it kind of depends on the user, right? Because with some of these, I actually have to go in and, and click the little button that says, I want captions to show up, and it's on an individual user basis. Um, so if okay. you know, another user doesn't want to see the captions and they haven't you know, turned it on, um, then the captions wouldn't show up for them. Gotcha, that makes sense. So that, that gives a fair amount of kind of variety if you're looking for browser-based stuff or, or some that are more kind of directly connected into conferencing tools like, like Zoom. Um, but obviously, we've taken a different tact with our kind of product lineup when we're looking at how to get captions created and, and then how to get them into a live stream. Um, maybe walk me through this diagram where, where we're connecting a couple pieces together to, to achieve that. Sure. So this is, um, you know, a picture of our live script solution. So the idea here is we have audio inputs that come into the physical hardware device itself. Um, you know, when we were talking earlier about some of the other solutions, you know, I'm going to put a, a URL or something in. I'm assuming that I'm having good audio on that URL feed, um, whereas something with live script, it's, you know, direct audio that can come in. Uh, having yep. said that, it could also be an HDMI feed. So I've actually done it where I've taken a computer and the HDMI out is an input into LiveScript. So I've got a YouTube video playing and I'm getting audio from my computer and it, it works the same way as some of those other ones are. 
um, so that that's an option as well. Um, right. Once it gets the audio, it will send that out to the cloud to get transcribed and then come back and will display the uh, transcription as a full screen transcription view. Um, so this is something that would show up, you know, you have a, a TV or a, a monitor or something. Um, the HDMI output from the live script unit would go into that TV and it would be full screen. You'd be able to see all of the transcriptions um, as they're going on. Um, um, when we're talking about applying it to a lower third video, which is kind of our topic here, what we've done is yep. taken the HDMI and having it come into one of our switchers, whether it's the Pearl 2 or the Pearl Mini, um, and it's an input source into our switcher device. Uh, once it's in there, right. then we can manipulate it and do with it as we need to. So we can crop it down and have it show up as a lower third on the screen. Um, in addition to the video itself. And then from Pearl, you can send that stream out to wherever you want it to be. Um, so then it can go to whatever the end destination is and it would have the transcription uh, applied to it. Um, yeah. But you don't have to have your transcription applied to all of your different layouts. So as you can see, we haven't had transcription on these layouts but I think we can actually switch over to one that we do have transcription on. We'll see whether or not it switches over. There we go. So we've got you know, a video stream and we have our transcription coming in as a lower third. And then the stream could be going out to wherever we need it to go, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or wherever we want it to, to show up example that we're showing here you in the studio you're in our audio Haas studio today I'm at home but in the studio you literally have a live script connected in the way we just showed there's there's a signal coming from the live script into the pearl that we're using to do this production and then we're we're cropping that as the lower third 100 percent. yep exactly oh perfect yep. and we have a, right. a number I of noticed... customers that are doing it the exact same way right I noticed Tim uh has some questions here there's one about uh, the delay and the bandwidth needed. So I think in bandwidth needed, he's probably talking about as we send the audio up to the cloud to be transcribed, I believe would be the bandwidth question. And of course, everybody's always asking, what is the delay, right? So once once someone's speaking, and maybe, uh, maybe it was obvious in the example we just did, but maybe talk about what we found in terms of performance and the bandwidth required uh, for that cloud connection. Sure. Uh, so in terms of the bandwidth requirements, it's actually pretty minimal. Uh, so even if we are getting a video stream into LiveScript, um, so I've got my computer connected and I'm getting a video stream in, I will strip the audio out and only send the audio. So instead of sending a full video stream out, um, I'm just sending the audio, getting a text file back, and therefore the requirements are pretty low in terms of the bandwidth requirement. Uh, in terms of the speed, um, it's pretty real time. Um, you know, there's a little bit of delay. It kind of depends on your internet connection to some extent, but it's going to be happening in real time. You can see it showing up on the screen as I'm talking and uh, the information just appears. Right. Yeah, it certainly seems quick enough in that example that if I miss something that you said, or I wanted to just quickly double check, I'm not waiting, you know, five, 10 seconds for that, that text to show up. It's, it's pretty immediate. It's not, it's not exactly as you're speaking, but it seems definitely close enough that as I'm following along and I go, wait, I just missed something that he said it's there in like a second or so. It seems, it seems pretty, pretty real time, as you said, pretty close. Yeah. So it looks good. Um, I have another question here from Edward. He's asking, how would you or could you um, do closed captions in more than one language, like in Canada? So there, I assume he's talking about French and English, uh, but certainly we see requirements for multi-language in the U.S. For, for Spanish and English, and of course, Europe, all kinds of languages. So I guess this is getting at how do you do translation in combination with transcription um, to be able to get that out into a stream? Yeah, so uh, 
LiveScript itself does not do translation today, uh, but it does support multiple different languages, um, over 33 different languages and variants. Um, and I say variants because spelling is going to be different between English and US, or uh, English and US, uh, UK English and US English. Um, so there's some spelling right. variations there. Um, if you were to have an event where it was in English and in French, you could use two different LiveScript units and have them set up one for English and one for French. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, they're doing a ton of, you know, press conferences right now, and they'll do it in English, and then they'll have someone translating it um, and speaking in French. And you could have that right. French translation coming into one version of LiveScript and be able to show that as a lower third, and then the English one coming into another LiveScript and have that as the English lower third. And then you could have those going out to two separate streams um, so that people could attend and, and view the one that is most relevant to them. Got it. Okay. Great. Um, so I think one of the other things that I remember when we were going through the whole live script um, kind of development, uh, one of the keys to getting good accuracy for the transcripts in the first place was making sure that the audio you're feeding in was of really high quality. Um, and I think when we look at, you know, the solutions that we've talked about here, whether it's browser based or I'm capturing something, I'm sending it over, uh, you know, RTMP out to EEG or those kind of things. Can you just talk about what you want to take care of or what you need to do to make sure that those transcriptions are going to be as good as possible from a quality perspective. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, as you said, audio is kind of one of the key things that you need to make sure that you're getting right in um, any transcription application. Um, even if it's, you know, you're sending audio to a person or any other type of system, uh, if it can't be heard, it can't be transcribed properly. So, you want to make sure that you are getting the best audio quality you can. And a lot of that is dependent on the microphone that you're using. So if you're using, you know, a professional quality XLR microphone, you're going to get better results than if you're using your, you know, $5 headphones that you got somewhere um, that, you know, has a mic in integrated into it. Um, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. We got one last question I'm going to cover before we probably wrap up here um, today. And it's it's asking about uh, transcription hardware setup. Can the audience be given the option to turn the captioning on and off? And, and I think we covered that briefly at the beginning there. There are two ways to put the captions into a live stream. One is to kind of put them right into the video portion as pixels on the screen in which case the user cannot turn that off. All users uh, viewing that stream are going to see it. Um, the second way is to embed it in the metadata uh, so that the player uh, can be aware that it's there and allow the user to turn it on and off. Um, and what we've been talking about mostly today is is not the embedded type. It's more putting it right across the, the kind of bottom lower third, in which case everybody sees it. Um, but I'm sure we'll see solutions going forward um, that will start to embed it as metadata or give you the option to do either, depending on whether you think the users that you're connecting with have a player that can understand those captions in the, in that way, or whether you want to play it safe and just bake it right on the screen. So I, I think today mostly it's baked onto the screen, but we'll start to see some options uh, coming forward. I'm sure as more and more people get into this automated um, transcription. There's, there's actually um, a third option. Um, which is something okay. that LiveScript does as well. Um, so the transcription is going to be fed into a stream that you can watch on your phone. So it's only the right. transcription yeah. on your phone, so it's not part of my video feed, uh, but if I want to see the transcription, I can actually go to a URL on my phone and my phone just displays the transcription. Um, so it's not hard-coded, it's not part of the metadata, it's not part of the stream itself. Um, but then it's I a, can actually, it's like a second screen kind of idea. Yeah. A different, it's it's kind of like the otter one altogether. a little bit. Um, right. So it's, you know, not part of the Good. video stream, but yeah, I could actually watch the transcription as well. So, okay, 
Great. Well, I think that's a good place to kind of wrap things up for today. Um, if you want to know anything more about LiveScript, um, you can certainly go to our, our website at Epifan Products LiveScript. You'll see all kinds of details there. If you have any questions for us um, that come up kind of after, I think we've answered what I've seen in chat so far. Uh, but if you have more, do follow up with us at info at, at epifan.com. We're happy to, to engage with you guys and answer whatever questions we can. Um, Next show, we will be covering USB for streaming. So taking a USB feed, using USB capture products to, to, to achieve some streaming. So going back to very simple setups and covering off how all of that works. So tune in next week, uh, 3 p.m. Thursday. We'll be talking all about that. And uh, for today, just want to say thanks very much for uh, viewing with us here today. And Greg, thanks for all your help uh, describing all the options we got here for for live transcriptions perfect thanks Dave. take care everybody and we'll uh we'll see you next week at three